we're going to talk about Quinton Johnson. He's, I'll be honest, getting hyped to a point where I can't quite believe what I'm seeing. Um, he's he's been talked about as wide receiver one in this class. So he's a four star recruit coming out of TCU, six four hundred ninety three pounds, big bodied, being called a, a, a contested catch weapon, being called you know all sorts. I can't get on board. Talk to me. Where where are you at with Quentin Johnson? Um, I feel like I feel like how I. I feel like how I approach Quentin Johnson, it's really been a roller coaster. Like I was in early on, like in Debbie leagues, I saw the potential. I held, held firm on that. Even coming into this college season, I was like, this is a guy that could really um, like before the season went kind of awry for Keishon Butte. I was like, this is a guy that could push Keishon Butte, uh, kind of be in that top tier wide receiver right now. I'm really cooling on him a little bit. I still like the potential that he offers, um, but it's a lot of projection, right? And it's a lot of inconsistency. I do think he's going to get drafted early um, because I think the NFL falls in love with his size profile, right? I think that he's a big boundary receiver who I think is going to run pretty well. I think that he is going to really, like I could be wrong here, but I wouldn't be shocked if he, pushes like low four fours like i think he's going to be moving at the combine um and i think if he runs anything close to that like you know four four one four four two something like that he's going you know top 15 and that's probably the wrong move <laughs> um in fantasy perspective right now i had him as my wide receiver three i say that with little conviction like i don't I don't really feel good about that. The last time I was going through my wide receiver rankings, I had him behind Jackson Smith and Jigba and Jordan Addison. But I think there's a real shot uh, that he could end up below at least Josh Downs and maybe both Josh Downs and Jalen Hyatt. Um, So it's like a fluid wide receiver three for me. I think more likely than not, he ends somewhere. He ends up somewhere like wide receiver three, wide receiver four, um, and I think it could be a guy that probably gets drafted for me a little bit too early in rookie drafts, um, which is unfortunate. Like I would like to have some shares of him, but I think it's probably going to get a little too out of control based on the fact that I think he'll test fairly well athletically and uh, get some pretty good draft capital, and then somebody will buy way into that. But yeah, he's just he's too inconsistent and I know he hasn't had the best quarterback play, you know, for three years at TCU, but there's too much meat left on the bone, uh, inconsistent hands. And like you said, I don't think he's this big, like I, I get, I get how people r- arrive at the contested catch sort of receiver, but he really doesn't play with the same strength and physicality through those contested catch scenarios that you want somebody of his size to. Uh, and then, coupled with pretty inconsistent hands overall, it makes it a little tougher to get as excited as I hoped I would have been uh, this time a year ago about him. Yeah, I think for me, I kind of see what everybody loves in that he's a big bodied outside receiver. He's quick. You know, he is that long strider that I think is going to test really well at the combine. I think that 40 naturally suits a a receiver like him that's got that longer stride pattern. That I I wouldn't be shocked if he ran really, really fast at the combine. My issue is, is that we talk about him as a contested catch receiver. He caught 34.8% of contested catches last year. Like that's, that's pathetic. Yeah. And this, that's supposed to be a calling card of his. We've got this highlight on the screen that everybody keeps showing me. I keep seeing tweeted constantly about, I, I can't see it. He, he runs a drag route. He gets it's, 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 they send six, it's cover zero. He's being covered by a safety who's lined up 15 yards deep. He runs across the formation with nobody anywhere near him. He then catches a check down, essentially, runs across the field and up the sideline score a touchdown unchallenged. Like, I don't, I can't see. Yeah, he just kind of gets what, lost. Like, there's nobody what, near him. <laughs> like, what, what's, what's, in all seriousness, okay, fair enough. He scored like a 70 yard touchdown against a very good team. Great. It was a really important game, but 
99% of receivers in the NFL can do that. It's, it doesn't show me anything. And yet everybody keeps holding it up up to this incredible highlight that means he's going to be a stud at the next level. I think that, look, I just feel like he's a poor route runner. And I don't think that translates. I don't think he's got the re- refined skills because I don't think he sets up defenders well. So I think he runs his route as prescribed, but I don't think there's any nuance to it. You don't mm-hmm. see him trying to square up a corner yeah, knowing that he's got an outside release so that he can create that separation. He basically runs his route as if somebody's drawn it up on a chalkboard. I think because of being larger, and we talked about him being a long strider, he's not super smooth in and out of his breaks. Right. And I just think that for me... I worry if we're saying he's big, he's fast, but he struggles creating separation. And I think that it's the Calvin Johnson theory in that everybody boosts up these big, tall, fast receivers because they're like, Calvin Johnson was the greatest thing ever for fantasy. Let's let's go and get another one. And we see it every single year. And it's like, yeah, for every DK Metcalf, great. There's also a Terrace Marshall. There's also a Traylon Burks and, yeah. and, and guys like that. And it's like, this is a really weird class in that there is a lot of smaller, undersized wide receivers mm-hmm. that potentially profile as slots at the next level. And it feels like we're boosting him up because, because he's the only one who's not that. Agreed. For me, he's in my tier three of wide receivers. But, sorry, I've got that wrong. He's in my tier two. Jack Smith and Jigba's in tier one. But I've got him behind Jordan Addison, Keishon Butte, and Josh Downs. So he's currently my wide receiver five because I think that there's more of a projection on him than some of those other guys that I know might not have the ceiling, but I yeah. think that they're going to come in and be able to get open at the next level. Have you done Jalen Hyatt yet? I have, and... I'll be honest, I didn't like what I saw. But <laughs> by the sounds of it, you're quite a fan. I like him, but I think that I think what I've warmed on him is I think he could do a lot of what we think Quentin Johnston can do. And I think he does it better. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. So I think Quentin Johnston could be a player that enjoys like I don't I think he could enjoy a better NFL career than he ever will be like a fantasy asset. Like I think he could prove useful for an NFL team. I saw someone comp him to Martavis Bryant. And I kind of like that. Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a yeah, good that one. Big, big, long legs, strider. Yeah. yeah. I forget who it was. So I apologize for not shouting him out, but it's a yeah, good that's comp. A good shout. I like that. Um, yeah. So it's interesting, but I do think he'll run good. And then, uh, whew, man, it, it's going to be crazy. I think he's going to go way too early that we're all like, wow. And it'll be way too far ahead of Jackson Smith and Jigba. <laughs> Yeah. And I think I think the thing is is it's 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 basically like we were saying about Zach Evans. I I don't as much as I sound like I'm being really critical and, and don't like him, I don't hate him. And I think that for me, I'd be happy drafting him at the back end of the first round in rookie drafts. The problem is is that he's never gonna fall to me at the back end of the first yeah. round in rookie drafts because there's always gonna be one person in each league who goes, be six foot four, two hundred plus pounds, he runs right. this. He's, he's going to be elite and draft him probably at like the 106, 107, something like that, even maybe even higher. Yeah, but you're spot on. Back end around one is the right spot.